Hello Honors Chemistry and welcome to lecture one of our summer math refresher. So first what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the concept of measurement. So here we have a ruler, right? Um, and this ruler is useless, um, essentially, right? In that we've got all these numbers, right? So we could say I have one or I have five or I have ten. But those numbers have no meaning, right? Without a unit attached to them, right? Where the unit tells us what are we measuring, right? What quantity, right, we are measuring, right? So for example, with this ruler, right, this is a centimeter ruler, right? So I could say one centimeter, five centimeters, or 10 centimeters, right, is what I would be measuring, right? And this is a measure of length. So I'm measuring length in centimeters, right? That's what that relationship says, right? Length is my quantity, my unit is centimeters, right? Now, uh, to be a little bit more thorough, right, let's look at our ruler carefully and think about how many, how accurate can my measurement be, right? Let's say that I have a line that looks like this. Now, if I want to measure that line, which is not very big, so not easy to see, but let's say that's my line, right? If I wanted to know how long that was, right, clearly, it's at the four, right? I think that's clear. Um, I think we can zoom in a little bit and we can see, ah, yes, indeed. It says four, right? But it's a little bit past the four. But if we look here, let's look at what these are, right? These little lines are called graduations. And we'll see that, oh, if we count the total number of graduations, right? There are 10 graduations between four and five, which means each of these graduations is one tenth of a centimeter, yes? As in, this is four, this is five, and the middle, the little lines in between are one-tenth of a centimeter, right? So what I'll do is, that means that this right here is 4.1 centimeters. That line is less than 4.1, but greater than four, right? Which means that we're gonna have to use our estimating, right? So 4.0, and then we'll pick a number, right? To me, it looks like it's in between the four and the 4.1, so 4.05 centimeters is what I would come up with, right? And if we look at the ruler, what this is, is I've estimated one place beyond the smallest graduation. I have estimated one place beyond the smallest graduation, right? Where my, again, my smallest graduation is one-tenth of a centimeter, right? And so I know based on the ruler, based on the markings, I know that that measurement is between 4.0 and 4.1. So that means I can estimate one place beyond that, right? So I can estimate to the hundredths place based on the lines that are present. Yes? All right. And again, none of those have meaning without units, right? 4.0, 4.1, 4.05 have no meaning unless I have a centimeter next to it, right? Um, here we have some different types of glassware one might encounter in a lab, right? These tall, slender ones are called what? Right, these are called graduated cylinders. Yeah, we should know that. Um, and these other ones are called, right, beakers, right? Now, same things apply, right? So if I just go around saying, ooh, I have nine and a half. Nine and a half what, right? And the answer here, right? is whatever unit corresponds to volume, right? So all of these are measures of milliliters, right? Where milliliters are a measure of volume, right? Where volume is the amount of stuff that we have, right, in three dimensions, right? And milliliters is one of the common ways to measure the volume of liquids, right? Now, if we take a look here, right, let's look at the graduated cylinder here, right? What are these smallest graduations here? Right. These are 10 milliliters, right? Whereas here, our smallest graduations are what? Right, one milliliter. So if we think about what that means, right, at the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, all I can do is I can look at this line, this liquid level here, right? Thinking back to middle school, how do we read the liquid level in a graduated cylinder? Correct, right? We look at the lowest part of the meniscus, right, because the water is going to adhere to the sides of my vessel just a little bit and create a dip in the middle. So we look at the lowest part of my meniscus and estimate the volume. Since it's marked off to the tens place, best I can do is estimate to the ones place. So I know it's something less than 10 
And so my best guess is nine. And that is as accurate as I can get based on that graduated cylinder, right? Whereas in this graduated cylinder, right, I know that it's somewhere between nine and 10. And because it's marked off, and I am sure that it's somewhere between nine and 10, I can estimate one extra place. And I can say, you know what, I think that looks just above the halfway point. So 9.6 milliliters, right? So I get a better level of precision when I use this graduated cylinder with these smaller graduations. Yes, does that make sense, right? Um, and the same exercise would apply over here in our beakers. Yes? All right, so the type of equipment that we use is going to dictate the quality of our measurement, right? Uh, common units that you should know that you have picked up somewhere in middle school or biology, right? These are units I expect you to know. Time. Time is measured in, right, seconds is the common one. Uh, and we'll talk more about uh, measuring systems uh, later in chemistry, but seconds, right? Mass, common unit would be grams, right, or kilograms. And I know that in uh, middle school, you guys learn some of the basic SI prefixes, so we, you should be comfortable converting between some of those, right? Temperature units would be, right, common would be degrees Celsius, right, or Kelvin. Energy would be joules. Distance or length would be meters. Area, right, meters squared. Volume, right, meters cubed, um, or milliliters or liters, right. Um, density, right, grams per milliliter or grams per centimeter cubed. And we'll clean that up um, later in chemistry. We will use density a whole lot. Speed, right, meters per second, right, or any distance per unit time. All right, so now what you'll do is you will do your own practice. What that means is that every time we get to a practice slide, you will pause the video, work the problems, and then check them, right, by pushing play again to see what the answers are, right? So uh, push pause, work them, and then push play to see what the answers are. All you're doing here is reporting each measurement to the right number of places. Okay, so now let's let's do our practice, right? So this one is easy, right? So this is a digital balance. The digital balance does the estimating of the last place for you, which means if my balance says 16.43 grams, I have 16.43 grams. Those are always going to be the easiest, right? Next up, we have a graduated cylinder, and when we look at that close-up view, we can see that the smallest graduations are Right, the ones place. So I can see that this line is somewhere, right, uh, 41, 42, and that's 43. So I can see that it's between 42 and 43 somewhere, right? So I'm just going to eyeball that meniscus and come up with what I think is the right value. So 42.5 milliliters. And then if I look at this last graduated cylinder, that I don't know where I got it from, but for some reason it didn't have a base on it and it looks weird, so I drew one in there, that's why it looks like that. But if you look at it, it is marked off, right? So clearly it is, if this is four and this is five, that means this is 4.2, 4.4, 4.6, 4.8. So it's marked off to the tenths place, basically, right? Um, so I know that it's somewhere between 4.8 and 5.0, right? And so to me, it looks like it's exactly 4.80 milliliters. Yes, um, one place beyond the smallest graduation. All right, um, thank you for listening. Be good and stay tuned for lecture two. Have a great day, bye.